We're talking Palantir, quietly become a bit of a next-gen favorite, and it's certainly been the favorite for uh, many uh, bullish investors in the name as it's had tremendous performance over the last few months. Uh, Jenny, so far of the last three months, up 42%, 12-month performance, 176%. Uh, it's really been strong, but the nice thing is, if you still believe in it, it's 11% down over the last month, so it's volatile too. It always is, it feels like. I feel like there's never a day when we don't talk about Palantir where the volume doesn't stand out to me. I mean, like, this name trades and it, it moves all over the place. And actually, ironically, it's not making that big of a move today. We are up about one, almost 2% here, so definitely seeing some upside. But the company did unveil this deal to provide its software through Oracle's cloud platform. And the pairing of the two companies is making this really, I'd say, more sort of, sort of tackling the, the growing appetite for AI software in large businesses. Oracle has, of course, seen growth in recent quarters for its Oracle cloud infrastructure arm, which appears to be taking some market share from some of the three largest U.S. cloud providers, those being Amazon, Microsoft, and Alphabet. But Palantir last year launched AIP, that stands for Artificial Intelligence, its platform. And that was the company's real entry into the market for AI enterprise software. The companies did say in this joint announcement that they'll be moving some workloads running Foundry, as well as the company's software platform for corporate data analysis, and using then utilizing Oracle's cloud for the first time. But Palantir will also be making its Gotham software, which is specifically for government solutions for in its AI software deployable on the Oracle cloud. And that is actually what I think is the most interesting case about all things Palantir is its overall presence with the government because that's resilient. I know that also can have its, its, its headwinds and tailwinds, but Alex, what I think is, is interesting is its bulk of its revenue now actually comes from government contracts. It makes up about 56% of their total sales. So their CEO said, we are only in the very, very beginning of using AI for our country's security and military. And that's a way I've never really heard AI utilized before. Yeah, I've always said that I thought this was one of the companies that's actually monetizing this technology already. That being said, when you look at it, there's only so many government contracts they can get. Now that might be very sticky, stable, strong relationships, deep pockets, consistent. But to really grow, you're going to need some of these private companies to start being customers too. And starting with one of the biggest companies in the world, with uh, Oracle being a, a big name that they're now uh, associated with, this has to be seen as good news. I know it's kind of a modest upside move for the stock. Uh, and you mentioned the volume. I just wanted to say over 400 million shares traded in this last earnings uh, announcement. So, yeah, I mean, this is one of the more actively traded names uh, of all names. And go, I would say it's fair to say based on just the price activity that Palantir is the, the more of the beneficiary of this deal because Oracle shares are are pretty much unchanged. I know we got a nice move to the upside after their most recent earnings, but they're so big that it's like they have partnerships with everyone at this point, especially NVIDIA as one of their most notable partnerships. I think the street has been paying attention to.